In today's trade secrets, I would like to introduce you to my friend Brock Poling. Brock works at Stumac in the marketing department with me and Eric, Elliot and Todd, and he's another Stumac luthier. And he's built this really cool guitar that he brought in. He's had a little problem, so he's brought it in to show you how we're gonna fix it. And I asked him to bring this really cool router setup that he has when he does his binding. It gives him a way of keeping a very parallel line between the back edge and the binding edge. That's exactly right, Dan. So, so what I did was I made a jig that holds the router a consistent height from the bottom. So that way, when I route the binding all the way around the guitar, it's always about the same amount of wood showing. But always the tricky part is right here on the horn. And so when I was going around the horn, and this was the first time I ever used this jig, it grabbed the guitar, threw it across the room, mm. bounced it off a wall. It knocked a hunk of mahogany out of the side of the guitar. So I thought, well, now I'm gonna to have to paint this because there's not really gonna be an easy way to hide it. So I mixed up some epoxy and cocobolo dust, put, put it in as a paste, let it harden, sanded it all flush. I came back to it and thought, you know, that's not a good fix. We can come up with something better that will allow me to put a translucent finish on it. So that's when I thought, I'd bring it over here and let you take a look at it and see what you think. I think it's a really cool guitar. No, you wouldn't want to paint over that. I'd put wood in it. Okay. I wouldn't. I would use a saw and a chisel. So I could show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. I would saw right along the binding with the little razor saw, and then come out here with the saw, saw there, and then chisel it out and put a piece of wood in there. Try to find one that would match these grains, and you could make little pock marks with the pen to give the pores of the grain, and then shade over it. Yeah, just shade it just enough to hide it, but then still let all the grain come through. I love that, I think that's a good idea. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. It's hard. It is hard, that's for sure. I'm curious to see how it chisels out. This is not an aggressive saw, but it's sharp and skinny. I'm gonna get a hammer. <laughs> that's never a word you wanna hear when somebody's working on a guitar, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go in there and peck away at it with a smaller chisel and see which way it wants to go. It's wanting to chip right out on that saw cut. See it? Well, yeah, that's that's actually works to our advantage, huh? Oh, look at yeah. that. That worked great. <sighs> All we gotta do is get clean going in and out. That's close enough to think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it looks good. The wall's a little tapered going in. It's tighter at the bottom from the angle that I saw it at. I didn't do that on purpose, but I'm, it, I'm glad to have it. Gives me a little wedge effect. I can mm -hmm. drive a piece in there. Now let's get a piece of wood that'll be close to that size. I got some out for you. Okay. This old wood is from the Harmony factory when they went out of business. And this is from my great, no, from my grandma's table. We've been 1920s. When she died, it went to storage, and I found it. Didn't realize what it was and cut it, it cut up it and up. made guitars out of it. This is Honduras mahogany. Yeah. This, I'm pretty sure, is uh, from Stu Mac neck blank, but it's pretty good. Yeah, when they oxidize, and they'll basically this is all oxidized, that's oxidized, that's a pretty good match. Let's make it out of here. Okay, let's do it. We don't need a whole bunch of this. We just mm -hmm. need a little piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a little chunk of wood. If I can do all this just with a couple of simple tools, I'll be the happiest. Yeah, that's a nice fit. It's not a very big chunk going in there. It's not. We know that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go saw that out. I can tell you I just stuck that in there a second ago and just to, just to play with it to see if it's fit. It ain't coming out once it goes in. Nah. You're gonna have one shot to get that in where you want it. That'd be easy. Cause I lucked out. I do my best work with my eyes closed. <laughs> I'm a fan of fish glue, you like that? Mm-hmm. It's 
It's good for this because it has the qualities of a hide glue. Right, and you got a little more open time. Well, you're damn right I'm not going to get it out. <laughs> right there. I don't think it needs a clamp. I don't think so either. Rubber bands. That's, that's not coming out. That's going to have to sit till tomorrow and dry. Mm -hmm. I think you know that Brock could do this on his own. He's trying to show me off and thank you. Yeah, well, I like to just come hang out with you, Dan. Now that, that's going to be perfect. I'm going to let Brock chisel this down later on and you got plans to finish it, right? Yeah, I'm just going to put a, put a dark brown on it and that should hide that very nicely and I it's going to so. look great. Yeah, so hey, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much, coming, Dan. Man. It's yeah, awesome. Absolutely.